This is your executive director. We thank you all for coming. We know you have a choice in Thorium conferences to attend. I always ask you, know, why are you here? You know, you, why are you here? You want to get rich? You know, you want to change the future? You want to make a world worth living in for your kids? You know, is that why you're doing it? So I got a little story for you. you know, while boarding a plane to Washington, D.C. for the 12th time to meet Jim Kennedy last year and to try and beg for some movement in Washington, I had a very, you know, say an enthusiastic supporter of uh, our work uh, <clears throat> who was telling me that if he could just, uh, if I could just give him uh, $1 million, he would solve all my thorium problems. Yeah, so I told him, pal, if I had a million dollars right now, I'd be in Chile or Ottawa or even Iowa right now and not talking to some tin hat wearing nut job while getting on a commuter plane for the 12th time in a year. <clears throat> but I am here, and I'm in this world, and I'm in this room right here, right now with all of you, and we're all working to bail out this damaged ship together. You know, we're all in this together. There is no place really to run and hide. There's really no Argentina. There is no Singapore. There's no mysterious place that'll be safe from the results of what will happen if we don't succeed in this work. There's really no place that we're going to run away to. So another little, uh, a little aside here. I hear our Swedish friends are going to China this year to hear about this uh, Chinese work in the area of this wacky thing called TMSR, or whatever whatever that stands for. So I'm sitting here left counting off, you know, let's see, China is Shanghai Mali Corp for their rare earths now. Chesapeake Energy, the biggest supplier of natural gas in the U.S. is going broke, so they're taking billions from the Chinese to finance themselves. Most new offtakes of uranium have been bought by China, as you'll hear more about very soon from several folks. Uh, anything else? Well, let's see, uh, Chinese corporations are producing oil and mining copper in Iraq and, and Afghanistan with the protection from the U.S. Army. So you're starting to feel, you know, a little cornered, a little concerned. <laughs> a, little, uh, a little side note, uh, right now, just this week, a few days ago, I get, a, I get an email and a call from China, and this guy's like, Thorium Energy Alliance is being taken over, you know, and I said, uh, it's uh, news to me. Oh no, they are taking over, and they did. They were trying to, our, uh, one of our host uh, admins was saying that someone was trying to take our, our domain, it was trying to take thoriumenergyalliance.com, and I'm, and so uh, just as an emergency, I made sure I purchased a, another uh, domain that they could steal. <laughs> you should see the, uh, the lightly worded letter I sent them to uh, tell them to not steal my my website there, or our website. Look, we all have a pretty good idea what the general way forward is and all the whys, especially for the Western world. But you have to admit it, it can look bleak. When China files the first of its international intellectual property claims and erects barriers to entry by blocking supply chains and practicing their own version of atoms for peace by making deals with countries like the UAE and Malaysia, with or without patents, when they tie up the markets, is it game over? So I want to let you in on a little bit of what happened last year, over the course of this last year. Jim Kennedy and I were not able to say much at the last uh, conference, especially about the political work we were doing at the request of the folks we were working with at the time. And at the time, we were very optimistic that we were just weeks away of some uh, important bills being introduced, but as we found out, that, uh, you know, politics is a strange thing. So, you know, I can sum up the, the results pretty, <laughs> pretty succinctly by saying one party thought the idea of setting up a central supply chain for rare earths and a thorium bank to store and use thorium responsibly was a monopoly. Uh, thank goodness that the other party only just accused us of being socialists who were trying to set up a commune for materials and energy. So that all went well. Uh, <laughs> Oh, and, and they said that free markets would fix everything, you know, that the free market would fix everything. And we were also told that the USA does not do industrial policy anymore, which is too bad because industrial policy is what made America great. 
It's also what is making all the Asian tigers and China and even the Celtic tiger uh, at one time so, so prosperous. So I don't think an industrial policy is bad. One that at least levels the playing field, that's not bad. You know, a WTO lawsuit, you know, can go to hell. When you are the only one playing by the rules, it's time to bring some jujitsu to the table. You know, if the rules are even, we can play the, by those rules better than anyone else. You know, we can do this. So we don't have to relegate ourselves to Osel Rands. You know, we can still dream big here. We can still do big things in the West. Beyond just trying to make sure our social security system is in place and solvent, supposedly, I like to think it's a take on Benjamin Franklin's old line, those who are willing to trade industry for social security deserve neither. <laughs> if we don't start to make things in the West again, we won't have to worry about social security and the cost of living increases. That problem's going to take care of itself, believe me. So here's the punchline of my short little talk here. After four years of talking about the why of thorium, I actually don't really care anymore. You better have your own why firmly in place by now if you've been doing it this long. The train is leaving the station and it's time to get down to the doing of all this. You know, we've, all of us here, have spent ages and scores of thousands of dollars getting some very real engineering work done this year and other projects done. There are project initiation documents in the works. Engineering estimates are being made by paid engineering firms. Today and tomorrow, you'll see ever more real reactor designs, real salt chemistry is being done, real labs are doing real work. I've had the privilege to witness this with my own eyes, so it's very encouraging. Today and tomorrow, you're just going to see it for yourself that there is work getting done, and we will get this done. We have to get it done. If you want a future, we, all of us together, will get this done together. And it's not going to be done by one group. It's not going to be done by one company or even one nation. We're going to get this done together. I want you to put your personal why to the test of the next couple days, and I want you to commit to getting this done. I know we're, we're going to win this in the end, and we're all going to come through this better at the end than when we started. You know, how do I know this? Well, I've been saying it for four years now. Thorium isn't the future of energy. Molten salt reactors aren't the future of energy. You are the future of energy. You are the future of energy, and I'm not placing my bets on a gray rock, and I'm not placing my bets on some machine. I'm placing my bets on the people in this room. So now let's go do this. Thank you very much.